Welcome back. Recently, we graphed linear equations, or equations of lines on the coordinate plane. And we found that every time that we graphed a line, we knew that every ordered pair on that line satisfied the equation. So every ordered pair x and y that we input into the equation would work for that particular equation, as long as that ordered pair was on the line. Well now, in this next section, we're going to solve systems of equations. And a system of equations is one that has two or more linear equations. And to satisfy a system of equations, we have to have an ordered pair that works not for just one equation, but it's got to be the ordered pair or ordered pairs that work for both equations. So there's a variety of methods for solving systems of linear equations, and today we're going to study the substitution method. So our steps for the substitution method say, first, we want to solve one equation for one of the variables. Okay, Let me get rid of that. We want to solve one of the equations for one of the var variables. So in this example of 3x plus y equals 5, we're going to rewrite this and solve it for y. Okay, we're not going to mess with the bottom one because it's going to give us fractions. So we will rewrite this equation 3x plus y equals 5 for y. So it will become y equals negative 3x plus 5. So now we know what y is. y is negative 3x plus 5. And our instructions say to substitute this expression into the other equation. So we'll take this 3x plus 5, we'll take all this because it's y, and we're going to substitute it right in there for y. Okay? And then we're going to solve this for the remaining variable. So, what we have now is 3x minus 2y, or negative 3x plus 5, equals negative 7. So I've substituted into the other equation. I've rewritten my new equation. It's got one variable. It's got x. And then now we're going to solve this for x. So I get 3x plus negative 2 times negative 3x is 6x. Negative 2 times positive 5 is negative 10 equals negative 7. I will go ahead and solve this for x. I'm going to add 10 to both sides. I get 9x equals 3, I divide by 9, and I get x equals 3 ninths or 1 third. So I have found, in step 3, I found half of the ordered pair. I found x will be 1 third. Now I'm going to substitute this value into either equation and solve for the remaining value. Well, I want to find out what y is, right? Well, I might as well substitute into my red equation here. So I will take my one-third. y equals negative 3x, or one-third. So I've taken my one-third, and I've substituted it in. Plus 5 which gives me y equals negative 1 plus 5. So y equals 4. So I found the x and I found the y that will satisfy both of those equations. My ordered pair is 1 third 4, and that will satisfy this equation. In fact, it will satisfy both. So if I put 1 third in for x and 4 for y, that should work. So sure enough, 3 times 1 third plus 4 equals 5. 
That checks out. And if I put it in the other equation, 3 times 1 third, 3x, minus 2 times 4, does that equal 5? Well, 1 minus, something isn't right, 1 minus 8 equals, yeah, negative 7. That was my problem. I copied the problem wrong. It doesn't equal 5. It's got to equal negative 7, like my original problem said. So negative 7. This one's equal to 5. Let's go on to another sample problem. So let's do this again. I don't have the instructions anymore, but we want to solve for P and Q. We'll solve them either one, but this one already has what Q is. We already know what Q is. Q is one-third P plus two. So I'm going to take one-third P plus two and substitute it in for Q. So we have negative P plus three Q, and Q is one-third P plus two equals six. So now I have all p's, that's good. So p one third times three, so p negative p plus p, and three times two is six, right? I have to distribute. So plus six equals six. So I get, hmm, six equals six. When does that happen? That happens all the time. So now, what happens here? Well, this must mean I have an infinite number of solutions. And this is a little different than all real numbers. This doesn't mean every ordered pair is going to work. Okay? But it does mean there are an infinite number of ordered pairs that do work. In our previous problem, there was only one ordered pair that worked, one third and four. Here, there's a whole bunch of ordered pairs that work. There's a whole bunch of ordered pairs that don't work as well. Okay, a couple of ordered pairs that work are like the ordered pair three, three would work. So if I tried that, the opposite of three plus three times three equals six. And sure enough, negative 3, negative 3 plus 9 is 6. So that ordered pair works in the first one. It should work in the second one. Does 3 equal 1 third of 3 plus 2? Let's try it out. And sure enough, 1 third of 3 is 1, and 1 plus 3 is 2. Or 1 plus 2 is 3. So the ordered pair 3, 3 works. How about this? I'm going to ask you to put this in your notes. Try the ordered pair negative 3, 1. Does this satisfy... equations. So pause the video here. You put in negative 3, 1. Okay, these are in alpha order. So negative 3 would be the P and 1 would be the Q. And when you're finished with that, continue on with the video. So welcome back. Thanks for doing that. And let's do our final sample problem here. 2x minus 3y equals 6, negative 4x plus 6y equals 5. We want to solve one of these for either x or y. Um, I'm eyeballing the top one. Let's go ahead and solve that for y. So I'm going to rewrite the top one. Negative 3y equals negative 2x plus 6. I subtracted 2x from both sides. I'm going to divide both sides by negative 3. 
and I'm going to get y equals 2 thirds x minus 2. So now I know what y is. y is 2 thirds x minus 2, and I have to substitute that into the other equation. So I'm going to take this 2 thirds x minus 2, because it's y, and I'm going to put it right in there. So I have negative 4x plus 6y, or 2 thirds x minus 2, equals 5. And I'm going to solve this for x. Negative 4x, 6 times 2 thirds, 6 over 3 is 2, so that's plus 4. And 6 times negative 2 is negative 12 equals 5. So 4x plus, ooh, I get negative 12 equals 5. That's false. Negative 12 never equals 5. In this particular sample problem, I didn't find an ordered pair x and y. This answer is no solution. There's no ordered pair that works to satisfy both this first equation and the second one. So, in solving systems of linear equations, we're going to get three kinds of answers. We can get no solution. We can get an infinite number of solutions. And we can get the one solution. So that wraps up our introduction to solving systems using the substitution method, and we'll see you in class.